Hello and welcome to this mini lecture on first person narratives and biographies or autobiographies. And very simply, I just want to give you some ideas and thoughts to be working with as you get into looking at first person narratives and autobiographies. There's, a, there's all sorts of things to consider uh, and I do want you to kind of have a conceptual frame to work with as we move into this. So the things I want you to ask and things I want you to be thinking about as you move into these, this set of readings, which is our first set of readings, uh, I'm not expecting you to have great answers or to be able to have answers to all of these questions, but this is what should be driving you. This is what should be at the forethought. Because we have to think about an autobiography, a first person narrative. Somebody is sitting down to purposely tell the reader their story. And if they're doing that, we have to think about, well, they have some intention. They have some point to prove. They're trying to convince us of something. And we want to think about that because many times in our own lives, we have been we want to convince somebody. We tell our story to convince somebody else to believe something, to do something, to act a certain way, to understand something. So we want to be aware of that. And we want to think about, I don't want to say question the integrity, but we do want to question exactly the picture that's being painted, right? And I, one way to think about this is you have a friend and your friend asks you, how does this sweater look? And you like your friend. You really like your friend. You don't want to upset your friend. So you don't say, oh, you look really ugly in that sweater. Or at least, you know, if it's a sensitive friend, you may not say it that way, right? You might try to say, I don't know. I like this other sweater better. So you're answering the question, but you're not necessarily giving the most direct answer. And so that's what you want to think about when we look at autobiographies and first person narratives is, am I getting the right answer to the question of what your life is like? Or am I being distracted? Am I being slightly misled? Maybe not lied to, but redirected in ways that distract me from what the truth might be. So you want to think about who the author is. And what I mean by this, you don't want to just know their names. You don't just want to be like, oh, I know who the author is. It's John Smith. Uh, you want to think about who are they as people, right? Who is John Smith? What do I know about John Smith? How trustworthy is John Smith? Did he commit any crimes? Or, you know, what is, what sh what is there about this author? Because you're going to read something from them that you're supposed to believe. This is supposed to be truth. And so the question you want to ask is, well, who is this person telling me truth, right? You're going to be dubious about certain people telling you the truth. Um, and so you want to think about that with whoever the author is. You want to think about who is the audience, right? Who is this author writing for? The author may not be writing for you. In fact, most of our authors are not writing for you. They have no conception of who you are. They might be writing for a different audience, right? So you want to think about who is this, who's the target, right? Who's the sales pitch to? Sometimes the author is just writing to himself or herself, right? Some journals are just that, a personal accounting to oneself with the intention of never being seen again. But a lot of these writings are for others to read. So we want to ask to what purpose? You know, why are, or, or who is, is the focus of this author's writing? We want to ask, what is the author's relationship to his or her community? And what I mean by that is if we, if we get a sense of who the author is, and we understand where they sit in their culture, in their community, that's an important thing to know, right? When we read Benjamin Franklin, it's important to know, you know, Benjamin Franklin, even at the time, was a was essentially a celebrity. And so his relationship with his community in the ways in which he writes is very different in who his audience is, is very different than when we look at Mary Rowlandson and who her community was and who her audience was and who she was as an author, right? Because we have to remember Mary Rowlandson is a female in a male dominant society in a religious society and she has to write about going off and essentially living 
with Native Americans for several months. So how does she how does she negotiate that? Because her community, you know, European Europe Europe derived Christians are in very very at this time very very stark contrast or, or lots of tension between her community and where she was. What is the the author's what is the author's relationship to his or her audience? So sometimes the author's community is also the author's audience. But that's not always the case. Right? So this is something we want to think about is we want to re we want to recognize where the you know how the author relates to her to his or her community and is his or her community the same person that the author is actually writing to, the intended audience? This is sometimes not the case, and it's important to be aware of that. In the case of Mary Rowlandson, yes, it is the case. She's writing to her community, but in others, that's not the case, and that's important to remember. And so we have that question, are his or her community the same as his or her, her audience? And this is an important question to, to grapple with, to be aware of, because it can shape how you think about and process what's, how you think and process the, the content. Uh, what seems to be the valuable elements and important qualities of his or her life according to the writing? So this question is to be put out there of, you know, the author is offering some kind of narrative. What is the author emphasizing as important things? You know, what are the big, the big ahas? What are the big moments? What are the important things that this author wants to account for? And I would, I would encourage you to ask yourself, should that really be it, right? Because so many of these first-person autobiographies that we read, right, they talk about a lot of important things, but of course they leave things out, right? They might leave things out like their romantic interests or their, you know, their first true love or their, their lifelong partner or their favorite pet, right? Uh, and so it, it's important to kind of think about if we find out who the author is and find out information, well, what happened in the author's life that isn't accounted for? It doesn't seem important. And how do we make sense of or how do we reconcile those differences? So what does the author want you to think about the person? Whether, the, whether it is the, the author or somebody else. Um, so when the author is writing about himself or herself or writing about some other person, Ben Franklin does this several times in his autobiography. He writes about other people, and it's clear sometimes you know, he wants you to praise them, he wants you to like them, or he wants you to say, wow, that person's a real jerk, right? Mary Rowlandson, again, you know, she writes about the Native Americans and she writes about her people and she wants you to think certain things about each of them. She wants you to think certain things about herself. Frederick Douglass, when we look at his piece, he wants you to think about you know, himself in certain ways and he wants you to think about others. And so be aware of that. Be aware of how the author is trying to get you to think and look at the author as well as other people. And how effective is the author at doing this? And what all I mean by that is, in all of this, when you pull together all these questions, how effective is the author at getting you to really believe and invest and buy their narrative, uh, to buy their autobiography or, or their first-hand account? And I say this because this is just a singular view of what occurred. As we know, whenever something occurs between two humans, there's a good chance that they have very different perceptions of what happened. And so you want to think about how effective is this author at selling me that this story is more truthful than somebody else who experienced the same thing. And then what are some of the themes that feel like they belong to the American identity, culture, and literature? So again, we have these, we have these people telling their firsthand accounts. And what about those first-hand accounts tap into that American identity, tap into American literature, tap into what we talk about when we talk about American culture? And then finally, what are common traits and elements that we find within these, uh, within, uh, that we find within these biographical pieces? So here again, we're connecting the first-person first narratives and autobiographies with other ones that we read. So how can we connect Frederick Douglass and Sam Samson Occam and uh, Mary Rowlandson and Benjamin Franklin? What, what do we see? What are the traits and the ideas that connect these and allow us to see them as somehow interrelated besides the fact that they're all 
autobiogra autobiographical in nature. What are the you know what do people keep talking about, or what do people keep wanting to connect with as they write these pieces? All right, that's all for this mini lecture. Thank you again, and see you on the next video.